Okay, so by now you should have completed all your edge pairings, um, or at least all the ones you can. If you're lucky, you can pair up all 12 edges without any trouble. But um, if chances are you have a ed, um, an edge parity case like this, which is where they don't match up automatically match up, and you can see that if I put these in the right orientation to each other. Um, when I go to match one of them up, I have no unmatched pairs to switch it with. And same goes for this one. See, there's no unmatched pairs to switch it with. So, for this, um, you're going to need to learn one algorithm. And this is the only parity case you can have on a 4x4, which is where these two are in the wrong orientation. So this one needs to go over here, and this one needs to go over here. So, um, in the wrong place, sorry. And so you want to put them so it's in the right orientation. So, I mean, if you twisted these two, they'd match up. And, and twisted these two, they'd match up like that. And now, you want to do um, this algorithm. And you want to hold it so these are in the top layer like this. Um, so one of the unmatched pairs is facing you on the top layer. One of the unmatched pairs is facing away from you. And um, the algorithm is inner li u2 inner li u2 f2 inner li f2 inner r u2 inner ri u2 inner l2 and as you can see that swapped these two pieces, and so now all the edges are paired up. And, um, yeah, that algorithm is kind of long, but you should have it memorized, um, you know, in no time, maybe a day or two, if you solve this frequently. So now we can solve this cube as a 3x3. Three three. And, um, we're going to do that by only turning the outer layers. When you're solving a big cube as a 3x3, three three, mm, you want to make sure to only turn the outer layers. And that's because um, if you turn an inner layer like this, it's going to mess up your centers and your edge pairs. So you only want to make inner layer turns if it's specified in an algorithm um, when solving like a 3x3. Three three. So if you only turn the outer layers, it won't mess anything up um, edge or center wise. So now we just have to solve this as a 3x3. Three three. And it's a little out of proportion, but it's the same concept. So first, you're going to get the cross, obviously, and you just have to imagine these four centerpieces if they were this one centerpiece, and, you know, these two edges as one. So just imagine this line isn't even there, and it's just bigger than the rest of the pieces. So I'm just going to not really go into depth here because you should already know how to solve a 3x3, three three. and if you don't, you can check out my tutorial um, for solving the 3x3, three three, which will be in the description. And this cube pops a lot, and it's annoying, so I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so right there, I've solved the cross. And as you can see, this is my centerpiece right here, and these are all my edge pieces. And that took a while because I kept having to pop pieces back into place. So, anyway... Now you can go ahead and solve the first three layers. Now you can do this using the F2L method, um, or you can do it using the beginner's method. And I'm not going to show this on camera because um, we might confuse people who don't use F2L. So I'm just going to show you, um, for example, if you want to solve it using the beginner's method, it's the same thing. Just match this up. This, like, Say I want to place this edge piece right here. Just match it up with its center like that. And then you know, just do the algorithm like you would, as always. And um, F2L, you can just solve it as you would F2L.